What's up my writing weirdos? Hey, it's BC here again today. So in my customary weirdo fashion, I am doing a second pop-up today. The first pop-up was a little bit earlier this morning, late at night, whatever you want to call it. I was unable to sleep. Let's just put it at that. So I was unable to sleep and then I realized that I could, you know, get up and I could do some writing and I could be productive during my writing. And then that way I could um, do some stuff. Well, I managed to finally write myself into sleepiness at some point, but I napped for a little bit and then I woke up realizing that the scene that I'm working on is still really bugging me. So I'm going to do a second pop up today just just to be weird because, you know, that's me. So I want to say hey to Destiny for joining me. This was a very last minute pop-up, so I don't expect very many people. Plus, I think Kate Kavanaugh is doing a Pomodoro Sprint right now, too. So I have a feeling a lot of people will be over there on her Pomodoro Sprint. But hopefully we get a couple more people that join us today. If not, it'll just be you and me, Destiny, getting some work done. You know, we'll just get some work done and it'll be all good. So... Basically, what happened last night was I ended up going to bed. It was much later than what I normally go to bed, but for some reason, I really wasn't all that tired. Like, my body was physically tired, but my brain was just kind of kept going, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to sleep with my brain doing that, so I got up um, a couple of hours after I tried, like, in a futile attempt to go to sleep and was completely unable to do that. So I got up and thought, well, I'll write a little bit, but if I'm going to write, it's the middle of the night, there aren't anybody doing any streams, but I will, you know, think about doing a stream. So I went over and By the Brook was actually doing a stream, which was really cool. It was at the very end of her stream when I popped on there. And I thought, okay, I don't think there's anybody else doing any sprints uh, coming up, so I will do some sprints so that I can get through the scene because... I'm working on this scene in my book that is absolutely driving me nuts. The scene has to be there because it relays vital information to a secondary character. And for those that don't know, the book that I'm talking about is the third book in my Metaphysical Chronicles series. Um, the first two books are, excuse me, the first two books are currently out and they are, um, a Touch of Darkness and A Touch of Madness. And this third book that I'm working on, which is, it's not a spinoff, but it has a different main character to it than the other two books do. Um, and has a, and has a, is set in a totally different place. This third book, um, like my other two books, is told from first person point of view. And so I need one of my secondary characters to know some of this information so that the next scene that I'm getting ready to write will be um, between the, the secondary character and the main character confronting uh, the antagonist of the story. But I, I need this scene to go off. But the, I'm having a lot of trouble with it because I've already basically written this. I know this information and it's just me rehashing it and retelling it to my readers at this point so that, and they already know that this information. Um, so I'm having a lot of trouble with, you know, I'm just having a lot of trouble with writing this particular scene. So last night what I was saying was that it is probably like the worst writing I have done in a very long time, but I don't really care that it's bad writing at this point because I can edit that shit later and make it better, but I can't edit, obviously, a blank page. And I'm not letting myself, and you'll have to pardon my German Shepherd, I'm sure you can hear her drinking water in the background. Um, it's rather warm here today, so she's been drinking a lot. But anyway, um, I can't, you know, I, I, can't, I, I don't want to give myself permission to skip over this scene because I've been doing that a lot lately with, with saying I'll go back and I'll fix the scene later or I'll insert things into the scene later. And since I've been doing that a lot lately, I don't want to skip over the scene. Plus, I think this scene has a lot of potential for building up my inner emotions for the next scene because I'm going to need a lot of really hearty emotions to write this next scene, which... Is going to be a lot of fun to write, but it's also going to be a lot of 
um, emotional turmoil for me to write too. So I'm looking forward to it. And I think that's another reason that I'm having trouble getting through this scene is because I really want to get on to that next scene, which is really fun. And this scene seems just kind of ho-hum. I need to get this information in here. But we'll see how it goes. And so essentially that is the reason for my second stream in the same day, basically, because I did stream at two o'clock this morning um, for about three hours, two o'clock my time, that is for about three hours, and then um, ended up going to sleep uh, for just a little while, got up, spent a little time with my partner. And now I am back on the stream again, because I realized I'm going to be writing anyway. My partner is working an extra shift today. Um, so that we have more money for when we move into the new house, which we're closing on this week. And I thought, okay, I'm going to be working anyway, so I might as well work with the rest of my fellow weirdos and see if everybody else can get a little productivity done too. So good to see you, Jennifer. I am glad that you are here. You are one of my favorite writing weirdos as well. Destiny is working on some blog stuff and they have some things to get in order. Hey, Naked Firefly, good to see you, girl. Hope things are going well in your neck of the woods. Because I've had very little sleep. You gotta have a little extra caffeine, you know. So everybody let me know kind of what you're working on. I know Destiny was saying that you're working on blog stuff for the day. Are you working on a specific article? Or are you working on like your layout for your blog or a series of articles for your blog? kind of interested. Um, I have really slacked off lately in blogging. I'm still um, like, obviously I'm still marketing my content and everything that's on there, but I haven't actually done any blogging on my blog in quite a while. Now I've done some guest pieces on some other people's blogs, but I haven't done any on my blog for a little while. So um, I kind of feel bad as a writer about that, but I had to slack off somewhere you know, just because I had to slack off somewhere at some point. I'm doing I'm doing my videos. I'm writing the third book in my Metaphysical Chronicles series. I am working on the fourth book's outline for the Metaphysical Chronicles series. And I am still working on my Dark Fantasy series as well. So that's a lot of things to be doing all at the same time. Um, at the same time that I'm buying a house and we're in lockdown and all of this weirdness is going on. Um, so that is kind of where I'm at and that's why I really haven't taken the time to, to blog. Plus I took a lot of personal time off over this winter. Just a lot, I took a lot more personal breaks on trying to figure out what I wanted to do and where I wanted to to dedicate my time to. And I realized that I wasn't quite as passionate about my blog as I have been in the past. And maybe it was time to just let it simmer a little bit and maybe pick back up my passion for it later. So um, the Naked Firefly is still editing. Ba brain is a bit fried, but who needs a normal brain? I am with you there, girl. Um, I, I don't know anything about a normal brain. I have a two plus two equals fish brain, according to my partner. And so all I know is that my brain does a lot of like weird stuff on a regular basis that people can't follow unless I'm like really carefully walking them through it. Um, and that's just tedious and time consuming and exhausting. So I don't really do that. Hey, Shannon, good to see you this morning. Hello, good timing. I'm going to try and crank out the final portion of my world history class while everyone is out of the house for a bit. Taking advantage of people being gone or quiet time is always good. Like, I am taking advantage right now of the fact that my partner picked up an extra shift for today. So he's out of the house and our roommate came home last night very, very late. As a matter of fact, funny story, he actually came home last night while I was doing my other pop-up live stream in the middle of the, the night um, here in the middle of the night here and he came home and he'd been out with um, out at a friend's house and I guess they had had a little bit to drink and so he came home and he was like all loud and boisterous and singing and dancing and just being his normal goofy weirdo self which we love him for and he didn't realize that I was live streaming and as soon as I told him I was live streaming and he was on camera like the whole time he was just he's just like 
amped it up and he was just like fuck yes he's like i'm a rock star now because he's usually very careful to not be in the background of my live streams but obviously since i'm recording and i'm live streaming from a weird area of the house since i'm in the dining room right now um and the kitchen is immediately behind he can't always not be in the the background but usually i have i have a chance to turn the camera off he just happened to come in right when i was talking right after we had finished a sprint and right when i was talking and i didn't have a chance to turn the camera off and he was being so funny that i couldn't turn the camera off at that point i just wanted everybody to see it so destiny is a book blogger book reviewer and write other bookish things i have a post for a book tour that has to be posted on the 27th yeah understandable um so it sounds like you've got uh, some things that you've got to get like straightened out and aligned so that you have some stuff because you have some stuff coming up and going on. You are very welcome, Jennifer. Um, it was not a problem. So Jennifer is thanking me for helping out with um, basically I just threw out some names of towns. She was having some trouble renaming uh, the town in her um, in her work in progress. And um, she was wanting to know if I could come up with something that was a little more realistic sounding and a little less fantasy sounding. So I threw out some names that apparently are all actual names of towns in the state of West Virginia, because according to Jennifer, there are a bajillion teeny tiny microscopic little towns and they all have very similar names to, or the exact same name to what I came up with. But there was one, we did land on one, so we were lucky um, to be able to do that. So I am very happy that I could help you with that. Naming towns is really something that I enjoy doing. Um, like in my, I mean, obviously I don't do it as much in my, uh, in my paranormal mystery series because the towns are all actual existing towns. In book one and two, A Touch of Darkness and A Touch of Madness, um, they are all set in Champaign-Urbana, which is in central Illinois. And so people are, you know, people know those towns. And I, I do have fictional places within those towns. Like I have fictional businesses and things like that within those towns. But I also have a lot of landmarks that are well known to that town. And then this third book that I'm writing in the series is actually set here in Phoenix. Um, it was initially going to be set in St. Louis, but I decided um, that since I'm no longer living in the Midwest, it was going to be harder for me to do research and harder for me to check up on places and make sure that it was, you know, make sure that it was, uh, that everything was going to be there and going to be the same as how I remember it. And I do still have some family that are in the St. Louis area and some friends that are in the St. Louis area that I could have like relied on their knowledge, but I decided to just screw it. I might as well just set it in the town where I'm already living. And then I could go into a whole new portion of the U S and how they're dealing with these metaphysical, um, people that are popping up in the world, um, in my book series. So, um, that's why I just decided to go ahead and set it here. But in my fantasy, in my dark fantasy books, I love naming towns. I love naming forts and towns and um, little and cities and villages and stuff like that. I have probably probably thirty or forty names of towns that never ever come into play in my book. Like they have yet. I have yet to run across why I would need this particular fishing village's name, but I have that particular fishing village's name and I have probably the reason why it's called that to begin with. So I really do enjoy naming, um, naming places. Usually I'm, I'm naming more fantastical type places, but that's okay. It was fun to be able to, um, it was fun to be able to to try and come up with something that hasn't been used, but yet sounded appropriate for the region that it was in. Good to see you, Joanne. Ho -ho. To you too. Hey, Glory. Good to see you this morning. At least it's morning for me. Not sure what time it is for you, but it's good to see you today. Hey, Mary. Yes, it is a part two. Part one was in the wee hours of the morning for me. Um, I was unable to sleep and just decided I might as well do a pop-up um, at the end of By the Brook, she had done a, a witching hour 
um, type of stream and I was still writing at the end of that and I thought I might as well write with everybody else and get weird with everybody else. So Jennifer says my fictional town is based on the small town I grew up in. I didn't want to use the real town in case I messed something up. Yeah, that I can that I can understand. Um, I worry about that a little bit when I'm using towns when I'm when I am using real towns. Like at the time I was writing um, a touch of darkness and a touch of madness. I wasn't living in Champaign Urbana. I was living about 45 minutes south of it. So I tried to make sure that I um, visited as much as possible and that I was actually paying attention to business names and things like that that were there so that I could um. <laughs> Oh, okay. Sorry, Joanne. Woohoo. Woohoo. I got it now. I wasn't sure exactly how it was pronounced. I've never, I never actually, I've seen it when you put it in there, but I've never actually thought about pronouncing it until now. This could be part of my sleep battled brain as well, where because I have not gotten nearly enough sleep for how long I have been awake. It's early afternoon for you. Missed part one, so it's nice to catch part two. Yep, no problem. Um, like I said, part one was middle of the night, me just trying to be productive and write, and I figured I might as well give some streams while I was at it. And then this afternoon, or this morning, or whatever the hell, I don't know. Even, I don't even know what time it is now. I'm, that's how sleep addled I am. <laughs> that um, I decided to go ahead and you know, do another stream because this scene is just really just, it's in my brain and I just want to knock it out and I want to get it out of my way so that I can get to this next really important scene in my book. Hey, Alley Cat, good to see you again. Alley Cat was here for part one of my, of my uh, pop-up stream earlier today. So now she gets to be here for part two. It is good to see you. Hopefully you got some sleep. Um, I did not get much sleep, so I'm pretty wired on caffeine at the moment. Um, I spent all night not drinking caffeine specifically so I could fall asleep. And when I finally did fall asleep, I slept for just a little bit. And then of course my partner woke up cause he had a shift today. And so that ended up, it wasn't really my partner waking up that woke me up. It was the fact that my partner woke up, which woke the kittens up. And then the kittens decided that I was their personal play trampoline and were just like romping all over me. Um, and so that woke me up, of course. No, Joanne, this is my same old, same old home. Um, then we don't get our keys officially until the end of this upcoming week for the new house. We have to sign our paperwork um, on Tuesday, I want to say, is the when we sign our paperwork, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we have um, something called a final walkthrough. Or no, it isn't Tuesday or Wednesday we sign our paperwork. It's, oh hell, Tuesday or Wednesday for something. I can't remember. And then on Thursday, we have our final walkthrough just to make sure we absolutely want the place before we sign our paperwork and officially get our keys. And then on Friday, we have our official, like, signing of everything like signing our life away and getting this house and getting our keys for it which I am super excited for I'm so excited so excited um but what you're seeing behind me of my kitchen and my dining room so my dining room is all packed up um with the exception of like the printer is still out and like our record player is like our record player and speakers are still out um no records are out because I packed all those up but I ran out of room in our spare room where we were kind of keeping all of our stuff. So I was going to move the dining room table in there so that I could get this whole section cleared out so that we could clean and we could do a little bit of painting that needs to be done, some touch up painting that needs to be done. Um, but I haven't had a chance to do that yet. And then our kitchen, we left our kitchen intact um, and it'll be the very last thing that I pack before we actually move into the new house because I don't want there, I want it to be pretty seamless between us being here and then us being at the new house. I don't want there to be really any inconvenience at all for our roommate um, because it's not like he made the decision for us to buy a house suddenly. He's all cool with it and everything, but 
I, so I want it to be as seamless as possible for us to transition. So, um, Ali Cat, I did. I might take a nap later after the two streams. I'm on or done. Hopefully, yeah. I I got a little bit of sleep. Um, I got enough probably to keep me going, honestly. And then I'll probably end up crashing pretty early tonight, but that'll be okay. Caffeine has a 17 hour half-life. I feel that. And I am really enjoying downing my caffeine at the moment. So I am sure that at some point I will crash. Um, don't get me wrong, I love my coffee and tea. I'm not a coffee person. What I'm drinking is a chai latte. Um, and I freaking love those. I'm like addicted to them, I swear. Um, but I'm more, when it comes to my caffeine, usually my soda, soda is my caffeine intake. So, but I have been yammering on for quite a while now. I am glad to see everybody join me bright and early this morning slash afternoon slash evening slash middle of the night, wherever it is that you are. And I think we should go ahead and do our first sprint, which will be 15 minutes. So I will see you all in 15 minutes. Starting in three, two, one, sprint!
بزنی و Just the second time around, just making sure everybody's awake. You, you, know, you know, kind of a thing. So that is the end of the first sprint. Um, let me know over in the comments that way. Yeah, that way. How y'all did and everything. I, let's see. I managed to get a lot more done in this scene than I was getting done earlier today. Or earlier last night or, you know, however you want to. However you really want to put it. So let's see. I ended up doing word count, word count, be a little quicker. So I got 462 words, which is about double what I was doing during part one of the sprints, uh, the part one stream last night. So I'm feeling much better on that. Some of it could be the caffeine. Some of it could be the fact that it's no longer two o'clock in the morning. Um, it's more my normal writing time, which this is kind of later in the day for my writing time, but normally I've had some sleep. So this day is just going to be like all shades of fucked up. I can tell that right now. Um, let me see here. We had a few people that popped in during the sprint. Um, Celine the Bean, good to see you. Um, yes, you are new to my channel. I do not recognize your name. Welcome, welcome, my writing weirdo. And hopefully you get a lot out of the stream today. Um, no matter what productivity you're working on, whether it's writing, doing art, cleaning your house, feeding yourself, managing to get dressed for the day, just whatever. Float your pretty boat today and get you going. That's good. Hey, Sky. Hello, my fellow dragon, or well, my fellow weirdo, and everybody's dragon mama. It's good to see you. I'm glad that you popped in and joined us. Thank you for asking people to hit the like button. Um, it does show me some love, but more importantly than that, um, the YouTube al algorithm catches on the um, the amount of likes that videos have, and this that will help get these streams out to more people who are wanting to do more writing and be more productive. So that is what I really care about. But thank you for showing me some love. I do appreciate that. It does tell me that you love me a little bit. Um, Alley Cat got 137 words done. That is good to know. Naked Firefly is rewriting a chapter. So are you officially on um, your next draft? And that's why you're rewriting or are you being naughty and you're going and rewriting when you're on like a first draft or something? Um, Sky jotted down an idea for a fairy tale retelling I want to do. Um, Joanne Ninja Hen did some corrections and had a phone call. Celine the Bean popped off 273 words. Woohoo! Gloria Fink is outlining and staring at the ceiling. I understand staring at the ceiling. I actually spent just a few minutes staring at the ceiling back here behind me because I realized that my ceiling behind me is dirty as fuck and needs to be cleaned. So obviously that's something that I'm working on right now with getting the house ready to move. So I'm just going to look at, I'm going to see that all day now. I probably shouldn't have pointed it out. I doubt any of you could actually have seen it or any of you actually cared or maybe you thought it was a shadow or it doesn't really matter. So again, I'm rambling because I'm heavily caffeinated and sleep deprived. Mary Wimbley continued working on a scene I started while tuned into Kate Cavanaugh's stream that just ended right before yours started. Oh, okay, cool. See, I was going to tune into her stream, and then I realized it was going to be at the like right at the same time, and I didn't know when she was officially ending her stream, because with Kate, you sometimes never know. Sometimes she'll just keep going if she thinks she's being productive and she's really in a good spot, which I love about her, um, and I was hoping not to, like, crossover in her stream too much, so I'm glad that I really didn't. Awesome. Good to see you, Dick. It's always good to have you here. I hope um, I can help you be product, you know, productive and get a whole bunch done. Um, Dick got caught up in the middle of the sprint. Destiny is still working on blog stuff. And Naked Firefly's answer is, read the chapter, didn't like the way it was going, and I'm now rewriting it. Hopefully my editor will still love me afterwards. Well, probably. I somehow doubt you're going to do so many changes that your editor is going to be like, what am I going to do with this woman? But you never know. You could, your editor could be like, 
What am I going to do with this woman? So my editor is fairly like, is fairly often like that with me. Okay. So that gets us all caught up on the comments and everything. So I'm just kind of curious, what do you all like to do when you are, um, like, like I'm having the moment today where I'm having trouble sleeping and I'm having like this insomniac moment and I'm just wanting to get as much writing done as possible, but it's like pulling teeth to get the words out. So I'm kind of curious what all you all try to do when, or even if you do, I mean, even if you write at all, when you're like in an insomniac type mood and you can't sleep, because I know some people can't, like their brain is almost shut off. It's just that their body is wired. For me, it's the opposite. My brain is wired and my body is usually exhausted, um, which is not unusual for me because that happens a lot, as a matter of fact. I, I live with chronic fatigue. So um, it's oftentimes is my body really, really tired, but my brain just keeps going. Um, so I'm just kind of curious what everyone else does to, you know, if you can even write when you are having like those insomniac nights and you can't sleep, or if you even have those. Who knows? I mean, some people, I used to never get insomnia. Like it was something that never really happened to me because I was so tired all the time with my chronic fatigue. But I take a new medication now that actually gives me a fair amount of energy and actually keeps me moving and alert, which is good because I was practically narcoleptic before. And um, but one of the side effects is that it can have like it can cause insomnia. So that is one of the things that happens. Um, so one of the other things that I did um, last night was, and I want, I just want, because I want to give a shout out. I started reading One Final Vinyl by Savvy Lizer, um, and I have to say, I didn't get, I didn't get too far into it because I was so tired um, when I finally went to lay down this early wee hours of the morning um, that I only got about 20 pages into it before I just literally could not keep my eyeballs open anymore. But... Um, I guess my eyelids open anymore, not my eyeballs, but you know what I mean. Um, but I have to say, I am already loving how Savvy writes. Like her voice is so strong with this character, not her voice, but the character's voice is so strong um, with this book that I, I'm just, I'm just, I, I feel like I am this girl. I feel like I am this, this woman, um, this teenage girl. So it's really, really cool to have a book that showcases like kind of my brain a little bit or what my brain was like in high school. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to pick up Savvy Lizer's One Final Vinyl, just based on the first 20 pages alone, I am heavily recommending this book to people. Uh, I can only imagine that it gets better as it goes on, but... That is my shout out of the day because that is what I am reading um, or was reading last night before I took my little nap, which most people would consider sleep, but it was just a nap because it was only for a couple of hours for me. Um, so Sky says, I can't write when I'm in that insomniac mode, which is happening a lot more often these days. I use that time to mindlessly watch movies or play video games. I'm not much of a video game person. Um, weirdly enough, because I'm a card gamer, I'm a board gamer, I'm a table topper, I'm a, I'm a role player, I'm all sorts of games, but not so much with video games. I've tried to play them over the years. I get frustrated with the repetition and I get frustrated with the hand-eye coordination. I think if I found a video game that was entirely role play, then like it was all about collecting the clues and making the decisions and the like it was closer to a choose your own adventure type of a, of a game, then I probably would enjoy it more. But any kind of fighting in, in a game, I don't like my hand eye coordination is so bad. And I get so frustrated with the fact that I can't ever get past those scenes to get onto the rest of the role play that I, I just get frustrated. So, but usually I mindlessly watch movies a lot, a lot, a lot. 
Um, Dick Moonstruck, I don't really have insomnia and I start writing when I wake up usually. That's a good thing. I do, I write when I wake up. Um, I don't, I don't write on my story when I wake up. I bullet journal, um, basically the stuff, whatever it was that I dreamt about for the night or whatever it was that was running through my brain when I first woke up or when I first, or when I started to fall asleep. I'll journal it when I get up in the mornings. And the main reason that I do that is because literally every book that I've ever written, which I have, I have, so I have four full length books out at this point and I'm in three short story anthologies. Um, so seven total, but every story that I have put out and everything that I have ever written has been based off of a dream or inspired by a dream somehow. I mean, even my last book, Karaoke Jane, even though it's based off of, off of a period in my life, it was, it started out from a dream that I had about that period of my life and how it could have been turned into a really good story or what I consider a really good story. So I do journal first thing. So Mary says, that's me. My body is constantly wired, but my body my brain is constantly wired, but my body gives out and crashes. When I have those moments, I sometimes read through my side stories and play around with them. Ooh, I just bought one final vinyl. <laughs> it is a really good story. I think you'll enjoy it, Mary. Haven't started reading it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, Dick didn't have any moments of insomnia combined with the declining will to write yet. I guess that's going to be a wild ride. Uh-huh. Let's see, uh, just skipped from me. Just skipped on me. Hey, Garnell, good to see you. Garnell says, I suffer from insomnia and never thought about writing during those times. I always try meditation or rain sounds on YouTube. So I do a lot of, because I can still hear Tibetan singing bowls, even with my hearing aids turned off. I do a lot of Tibetan singing bowls when I'm going to do meditation. Um, I do... I will sleep with my hearing aids turned on so that I can hear thunderstorm sounds. Um, when I'm trying, when I'm trying to sleep, but usually when I, when I rarely have insomnia, it's because my brain is racing. Um, it's not usually because my body has a bunch of energy. It's because my brain is racing, which is probably a combination of my anxiety and my OCD. Um, and God knows, you know, everything else that's wrong with me, my, my PTSD. Yeah. I'm kind of fucked up really. I mean, wow. If I think of all of my diagnoses, then I'm kind of screwed up. But um, it's okay because I, you know, usually I throw myself into my writing, which is a good thing. And that's why I have um, not quite as many books as some people have out, but that's why I have several books out. So Joanne Ninja Hen says, I have insomnia since I'm small, since I was small and decided as a child that I just enjoy it. I devise stories and have fun with it. I'm only stressed out when I can't catch up sleep for several days. I don't blame you. I would be pretty stressed out about that too. If I, if I went more than a couple of days, usually my insomnia is not that bad. Um, I'll have it for a day, maybe two days where I get just little cat naps here and there. And then usually by the end of a third day, I'm crashing pretty hard. Um, and I know that that's mostly because my, I mean, just because my chronic fatigue finally just says your body can't do this anymore. And your, my body just refuses to let my brain be as active as it was. Um, Mary will also watch YouTube, listen to music, or play word puzzle games on my Kindle or phone. I don't, I used to play word puzzle games a lot. I don't play them as much anymore. And I'm, I'm starting to think that I should go back to playing them because I've noticed a, not a decline in my vocabulary. Like my written vocabulary is still very strong, but my spoken vocabulary has like become very limited and that bothers me. Um, I've always had a rather extensive vocabulary. And so I've always been, I guess, very well spoken. And I, I'm, I guess people still consider me that nobody's commented or remarked on it, but I notice it and it bothers me. So maybe I should go back to doing some more puzzle games and stuff like that just to kind of revamp my um, spoken vocabulary a little bit. 
Glory Fink says, when I have motivation productivity issues, I change gears. If I'm procrastinating writing, maybe I'll take a break and watch drag makeup tutorials. Procrastinating cleaning, I'll redirect my energy. That's a good idea. That is a good idea is just trying to redirect yourself and change gears can be absolutely what's necessary. I tend to, if I am having trouble with motivation, I usually will fall back on something that's more physical. Like if I am procrastinating on writing or um, doing my YouTube videos or even not feeling motivated to get on and do streams or things like that, which does occasionally happen where I'm not feeling, I'm not really feeling the motivation for it. Then I'll try and do something physical. I'll ride my bike. I'll do some yoga. I'll just do some stretching, you know, something along those lines. Hey, Audra, good to see you. Did you just got here? My only video game is Sims because it's a life stimulator. Again, I've never, I never really saw the point of playing Sims. So that's why I just kind of have never done it, even though it is basically just a, it is a life simulator. That's, I mean, that's all it is. But to me, I want a video game that is going to be um, an escape, is going to be an, an adventure but I don't want to have to like fight creatures or I'll do puzzles and stuff like that. Like I'm more than happy to do puzzles and um, stuff like that, even timed puzzles and stuff, but not so much with the whole having to like fight things or do stuff like that. Okay, Celine, it is good that you were here with us for a little bit. I hope you were able to get, you know, a little bit done during the stream that we've had so far. So it is my pleasure to do the stream. Like I said, I just pop up randomly um, every so often when it's not my normal, when it's not my normal time. Oh, uh, I guess kind of skipped, okay. If I ever find a game that's more like a choose your own adventure, you're gonna have to let me know I wanna play one, Sky says. Yeah, if I ever find one, I'm always, so my niece, my niece is much older well, not much older, but my niece is an adult, you know, she's got a job, a career, a house, getting married, kind of a thing. And she is a big video game player. And she's always on the lookout for me. She's always recommending video games. And she's always like, I think you'll like this one more because it's more role play um, than like having to do your actions and stuff like, and stuff like that. But um, there's always still too much action that I'm having to do, which just drives me nuts. But This guy says, I was introduced to Sims about this time last year, and I play it in bouts now. I'll go months without playing it at all, followed by a week or so of nothing but. Um, Audra has been playing for almost 20 years. I have a similar play cycle to yours. That's a long time to be video, video gaming, but I guess I can't say anything because 20 years is like nothing to me as well. Um, so there have been games, I've been playing D&D &D longer than that. So I've been playing Magic the Card, the Magic the Gathering, the card game longer than that. Glory Fink says, I've had insomnia since I was eight months old, according to my mother. I've been using the middle of the night as my alone time to learn new skill, skills, read for pleasure, and enjoy my alone time. Now that I could see, that is really good to be able to redirect your energy like that and to be able to accept a what would be normally considered a shortfall and turn it into a strength. So that is pretty cool. Um, Audrey, when I have insomnia, I usually read a favorite book or turn on a favorite movie for white noise. I do have a lot of white noise movies that I absolutely, absolutely love. Drives my partner crazy that I have these white noise movies, um, which really aren't white noise for me because I can't hear them unless I'm paying attention to them um, just with my hearing issues. But I know that when I look up or when I glance over, that movie is going to be there. And for the most part, I already know in my head what's going on. And I can almost play it out in my head. I know the movie is that well. Joanne enjoys Ruzzle, mobile world puzzle game. But I believe it's more fun in German, of which I know nothing. I take that back. I know about three phrases in German. Um, all of which tell people how many adults and how many kids need tickets, how many adults and kids I need tickets for. And that's about it. Um, 
Mary has Wordscapes on her phone and a game called Relax with Words on my Kindle. I like the second one because it plays calm, relaxing music in the background as you play. Probably be pretty good. I need to look into it. Um, Sky hadn't even heard of Sims before four, before Sims 4 came out. I didn't even realize you could still get the previous games until a while after purchasing it. I'm getting meowed at by kittens. Not meowed at. They do this. They're at this stage where they don't quite actually meow. They trill. They do this like kind of sound. And it's, it's so cute right now, but they do it when they want my attention for some reason. I can't figure out why they're doing it right now because they're sleeping. Um, but... Alley Cat just came back. Love video games. I'm like I said, not so much a big video gamer, but if I ever find one that is pure RPG and doesn't have any, I mean, it can have, like I said, it can have puzzles. It can have like a choose your own adventure style of thing going on. But if I have to fight something, yeah, yeah. I don't know how long I've been playing video games. I think almost 20 years. I was really young when I started. And you're a youngin. Rosalind says, now that I can see the TV, I've started playing Skyrim. It's got a learning curve in terms of the controls, but I'm loving it. My niece tried to get me to play Skyrim for a long time, and I, admittedly, I loved watching people play it. It was beautiful to watch people play it, but I never really was into playing it. So Dick says that they need some white noise movies. All I have is Friends series that I know inside and out. See, that's me with series. That's me with Golden Girls. But I've got lots of, lots of um, white noise movies. My one of my f absolute favorite white noise movies is the movie Tremors, because it is. And people are gonna people yell at me all the time for it, but it is one of the best written movies of all time. It has foreshadowing. It has harkbacks everything, all the details are perfect. Now, whether or not you like that particular monster movie, that particular style of monster movie, or whether or not you think it has terrible graphics or that it has bad acting or all of that aside, the writing for the movie is brilliant when we're dealing with a monster movie specifically. But yeah, if they weren't sleeping, I would totally put them on camera, but I don't want to wake them up right at the moment because they're little demons when they're awake. They completely busted one of my um, soft boxes for my for my video recording when they were playing just a little bit ago. I'm gonna have to either patch it up or figure out how to replace it. It's just a pain in the <sighs> and that's all because they feel like they should play with every cable and cord on the floor right now. It's just driving me insane. Okay, let me see. Sky's only been playing D&D for about five years. Wolf, my husband, has been playing for 15 to 20 years. So, yeah, I have think I've got even a few more years on your husband there. I think I even got, like, another 10 years on your husband. I've been playing since I was a very small child. Um, love D&D. Night, Naked Firefly. Glad that you could be here. Sweet dreams. Alley Unicorn fan is into RPGs, but most don't have my requirements. Let me see. Alley Cat loves Skyrim. People saying goodnight to Naked Duck Firefly. Sky loves Skyrim. One of the favorites to play. I'm glad, Sky, that you like Trimmers so much. If you want to give it a, another go with a video game, I would advise you to select a, a pet class. That is the best option for people who are hand eye coordination challenged. The pet can fight for you. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm sure I can ask my niece and she will totally be able to tell me exactly what that means. Mary can't use movies or TV shows as white noise because I always end up watching then when I'm supposed to be doing whatever else or sleeping. <laughs> like Hunter or Summoner or Demologist. Okay. So I will consider that then. All right, so let's um, do, instead of talking about video games and stuff, although I can talk about video games and what we do in our downtime and white noise movies and all my really horrible movies that I think are great movies because I love to watch them over and over again. I can talk about that all day long, but we probably should do another one of those funky sprint things, you know, 
usually kind of, you know, is, is what I'm here for. I'm pretty sure it's what all of you are here for. Well, let's, I should have queued this back up before, but I did not because I'm a slacker. All right, so let us sprint in three, two, one, sprint. Maybe. There we go, sprint.
Okay, that is the end of our sprint. Let me know in the chat how you did. And uh, if you're still working on the same things, I managed to get further, of course, this time, which I'm glad. Let me see where I'm at. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. At least I didn't erase anything. I've done that before. Uh, da, 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 da. So I didn't do as well this time, but I'm still happy because I'm still doing better than I was doing on part one of the pop-up today. And so I got 383 words still working on book three at this time. Um, it's flowing a lot easier now because I'm finally getting to an actual point in, I'm getting to the point of this whole scene. Um, I got the information relayed. I got a plan of action set into place between the main character and the secondary character. And now I'm causing something to happen with another secondary character um, that needs to happen in order to be like the impetus for some conflict in the next scene slash next chapter, um, depending on where I'm at in my word count with this particular chapter. If I'm not very far into this chapter, I'm gonna have to go through and do some fluffing because I really think that then the conflict, the climax that I'm at needs to be um, in a whole chapter to itself, um, or I kind of think it should be. I don't know if it has to be, since this is leading right up into it, but I feel like it really needs to have a chapter heading and not be just a scene um, in at the end, like sandwiched into the end of another chapter. So, um, so where I'm at is I am at a place in the story where um, a secondary character came to my main character asking for help and the secondary character has been relying on my main character who's been relying unbeknownst to them on my antagonist for this whole story um, to get some information about the problem that the secondary character was having. And now my secondary character is getting ready to poof, vanish. And it's going to be a big deal because my main character has really gotten used to this secondary character being around and um, really feels beholden to them now. So so Mary got a little further on the scene that they were working on and we'll be right back in just a moment. Alley Cat is back, been hop hopping back and forth on live ends. Who's the other live end that you're on um, at the moment, Alley Cat? That'd be interesting to know. The other stream, we were talking about extrovert and introvert stuff. It was interesting. Yeah, so I have a lot of... Um, I have a lot of thoughts on extrovertedness and introvertedness, too. Um, a lot of people think... A lot of people tell me that I'm an extrovert because I, um, because I thrive on not thrive on, but because my energy can be replenished by other people's energy. But I actually have to disagree because yes, my energy can, my energy can be upped by other people's energy, but I don't actually get refreshed by other people's energy. I get like a temporary high because I'm in charismatic mode is what I call it, which it's in my let me entertain you mode kind of a thing. But for the most part, I am actually um, very introverted. I would much rather stay at home, write my stories, read my books, watch my movies. And then every so often, very rarely, I want to do like social things and be out with people. So Dick managed to record some voiceover dialogue for a video. That is pretty cool. I am thinking about doing some voiceover dialogue. I had this video that I did about um, boring book syndrome, and it'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks um, during one of my usual Monday or Wednesday how-to videos. And I put so much information in this one video that it was going to be like 24, 
25 minutes long. It was crazy how long it was going to be. So I had to edit it down because I like my videos to ideally be less than 12 minutes. Um, I don't have much patience for videos that are over 12 minutes unless it's like some type of um, blog or something like that. But if it's a how-to video, I like them to be about 12 minutes long, relatively speaking. And um, so I ended up editing out a bunch of stuff that I, I know I can turn it into a second video, which I'm really kind of happy about, but I'm going to have to go through and I'm going to have to do some introductory, re introductory recording of other stuff that is in this video. And it would have made sense if I had left all of this stuff in that video. But once I plucked out this stuff, now it's just kind of like free floating and it doesn't have any reason why um, I would turn this into another video. So, that's something I'm gonna have to do as well as do some, probably some voiceover recording and just use a bunch of B-roll that I have unless I wanna go in and decide to, but it'll be, it'll be really weird because it's gonna be like, I'm gonna be jumping, unless I go back through and I do my hair and my makeup exactly like I did them before, it's gonna be a little weird. Um, I don't know if I have that much energy to go back through and put that much energy into it when I could just make some tea and do some voiceover and have my cats playing or some shit like that. Um, thanks, Alley Cat. I like to think that the story sounds really interesting and that this particular scene is um, kicking my butt in order to get to it, but I like to think that the story is pretty interesting. Um, so the author's name is Angela Ann. I don't think that I know her. I'm not saying that I like know everybody in AuthorTube or anything like that, but um, I don't think I'm subscribed to her. Um, so I may have to go and look her up and subscribe to her. Audra did 136 words, started a new chapter, and switched point of view. So it took a second to get started. I had to review where I had left the point of view. That can be really hard. Um, most of the books that I write are from one point of view. I very, unless it's my dark fantasy stuff, I don't switch point of view. I am a first person point of view type of writer um, and I love doing it. I know that some people find it really difficult to do because they're not sure how to show everything they need to show and it only be from one person's point of view the whole time, which is like, that was what, what I was struggling with with this particular scene all night tonight was the fact that my main character was there and had already witnessed what was going on um, in this particular scene and she needed to relay it to a secondary character who hadn't been in that scene, but I didn't want it to be boring. I didn't want to just rehash it for the readers because obviously the readers had already experienced it as well and because it did happen on page. It wasn't off camera. So that was, and, and it was just, again, it was just me struggling to creatively retell what had happened. Um, but I'm get, but I'm there, I'm there where I need to be. So that's the good thing. Joanne Ninja Hen edited a chapter, but I still need 200 more words to finish it. Um, why, Joanne? Why do you specifically need 200 more words to finish it? Is it just unfinished entirely and you're just guessing that about 200 more words will finish it? Or does it, is it falling short of some type of word count that you give yourself? I'm curious. Sky says, I plotted out some videos I want to film today. That is good. That is good. I have a couple of outlines for um, about four new videos that I need to do. I probably won't do them today, honestly. I'll probably end up doing them tomorrow, like during Dana's stream, I'll end up recording my videos during her sprints or something like that, mainly because, I don't know, I just don't like recording my videos on the weekends. It's my weekends, even if I'm gonna write, even if I'm gonna do a video editing, even if I'm gonna do my marketing, stuff like that, my my I want my weekends to feel like they're a little mini vacation which makes no sense at all but doing the videos recording videos for me is is really hard work um, 
I, I put a lot into them and I want them to be a certain caliber. So since I'm not very good at doing it yet, I want those videos to be like super good. And with that, I, I just pour a bunch of energy into it. So it's not something I want to do today. So Alley Cat's been told that they are more extrovert because I'm not shy as normal, though I'm more introverted. That's actually really cool. Yeah, okay, see, I don't ascribe to this whole introverts have to be shy crap. There's nothing wrong with us being charismatic. There's We don't have to be awkward. We don't have to be shy. The whole point of being an introvert is that, one, we don't, we don't feed off of other people's energy. As God, that sounds terrible, but it other people's energy doesn't like replenish us, doesn't get us going kind of a thing. And two, we would just prefer to stay home. We'd prefer not to be in a social situation. That's what makes an introvert. Not the fact that a person is charismatic or can be entertaining or um, is even suave and smooth in a social situation. I, I don't ascribe at all to the whole if you're introverted, you have to be shy or you have to be awkward in some way. I think that's just a terrible stereotype and it's just an excuse that, that people make for not being able to overcome their, short, their social shortcomings. And it skipped. Alley Cat agrees, I don't get energy from people, but I have backup energy, as I like to call it, if I'm with people for a long period of time, which can make me seem extroverted. Yeah, I um, I just flip a switch. I, I just flip a switch and realize that I need to be more entertaining in that moment. I need to be more extroverted in that moment than I would be normally, which would be to just be quiet and read a book or watch a movie and not be quite so on. Um, that, that's all there is to it. I do it the same thing here with videos. I have to be more chatty. I have to be more on and I have to be more upbeat, not necessarily perky, but I have to be more um, energetic than I would be if I were just sitting here working normally. And it doesn't make me less of an introvert. I would still much rather be here working on my story and writing my story. Um, I just happen to think it's a good idea to do it with a bunch of people on a regular basis, on a fairly regular basis. It doesn't mean that I don't like being social. I do very much like being social when I want to be social. That's what makes me introverted. An extrovert can just, is just wants to be social all the time. In my opinion, my partner is a huge extrovert. I mean, huge extrovert. He has no idea how to, I mean, he can entertain himself and he can do stuff like that, but after a little while, he starts to go stir crazy and he, he has to have people. He has to have some type of interaction. I think for him to just, he can't, it's hard for him to just sit down and watch a movie because there's no interaction there. There's stimulus there, but there's no interaction going on. And it's almost impossible to get him to sit down and read for the same reason. There's stimulus going on, but there's no interaction going on. And he really lives for the interaction. Like he's the actual type of social media person that will be on social media and will comment, not just scroll through social media just to see what's going on and see, like get a glimpse into people's lives. He'll actually comment on a bunch of people's stuff, which I do to a certain extent, but not as much as he does. So Audra says that they are similar. Most of the time they'd rather stay home, but occasionally go through an extrovert streak. I do tend to lean on the extrovert side. Yeah, I mean, my niece is also a huge introvert. She's very much like me. She'd rather be a homebody and stay home and play video games or play board games or RPGs, um, work on her masters, you know, watch movies and do her own sing-alongs, but she's incredibly charismatic. She's a great people person and she's great with people. She's not shy. She's not awkward. She's a little dorky, but you know what? That just runs in the family. So um, she comes by it honestly enough. But other than that, you know, she's not, she's not shy. She's not awkward around people. She's, she has great social skills. 
but she'd still rather be home most of the time. Every so often though, yeah, she wants to go out and do stuff, just like me. Every so often, yeah, I wanna go out and do stuff. About once a week, I wanna go out and do stuff. I don't wanna go out and do stuff necessarily with people. I will go out by myself and be perfectly happy going out by myself. I just wanna be, I just want a, a change of scenery, a different change of scenery and like, be doing something like before all the lockdown and everything um before all the the, the self-distancing and all of that stuff i would go to karaoke like once a week and it wasn't that i wanted the social interaction per se i just wanted to go and sing and dance and have a good time by myself all by myself um if other people sang and danced i mean i'd clap and you know i'd cheer and stuff like that for people singing because it takes bravery to get up and do that um but like it wasn't i didn't need anybody to interact with me i just get up and sing my songs i would dance to whatever i thought was interesting and fun and then you know i'd have some conversations sometimes i'll go whole nights and not have any conversation at all Sometimes I won't turn my hearing aids on and I'm, I'll just be there. What I can hear is what I can hear. And most of the time that is not normal conversation. So um, Dick was saying that, yeah, sometimes re-editing takes more time than recording again. Yeah, um, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I might almost have to do that, but I don't know. I don't know, I think I need to just do a small amount of voiceover and I have enough B-roll that I, I'm pretty sure that I can parlay it into what I need it to be parlayed into with the B-roll that I have. It might be just a whole heck of a lot of cats playing and all voiceover, but you know, I think that's acceptable. <laughs> Jennifer sees kitties and doggos. Yes, those I have. Um, now, of course, they're not back here now, but give them two minutes and they will be. So Joanne is, I'm stuck. I'm stuck for weeks on my current scene. It's an investigation arc and I suck at crime. <laughs> well, I would be really bad if I sucked at crime because I write paranormal mysteries and, you know, mysteries are all about the crime usually. Mary is back. Good that you are back. Put a pizza in the oven for the hungry teenager. It's always good to feed the growing teenagers. Um, so Glory says that they're more of an ambervert. I get buzzy from interacting with people, but I also find people exhausting. I'm happy to be at home alone most of the time with short bursts of socializing. I guess maybe then I am an ambervert because that is almost exactly how I feel, Glory. I've always just called myself a charismatic introvert um, that I do, I can get a buzz from interacting with people, but it's, it's, incredibly exhausting for me. Um, I have to, like, it doesn't seem like it in the moment. In the moment, I, I seem like I could just keep going for an eternity and I could, could keep going as long as it is required of me to keep going, if that makes sense. Um, but then afterwards, I've got to have some me time and it's got to be some serious me time. Like my partner even knows that after I'm like that, I just need to spend the next day maybe to just reading books and being left alone. Audra says, I know so many introverts in theater, they just need to be alone to recharge for a bit. Yes, that is exactly it. And I did theater as well. Um, and it's a great place for us to be able to, um, oh, I just realized I missed a whole bunch of Missed a whole bunch of comments because streamer, streamer jumped on me. But um, it's a great place for an introvert to to get to be extroverted and get to have that the moments of extrovertedness and then have their moments where they're just backed off because they're playing a character essentially. And that's what an introvert is doing when they look like they're being incredibly social, when we look like we're being incredibly social, is we are just playing a character. And the character is somebody who's incredibly social. 
So Joanne says, I have all the suspects lined up before the investigation and added a line that my main character realizes she should have investigated first, according to Agatha Christie books. Yeah. Alley Cat, yeah, Sam, a friend of mine is an extrovert, but he used to be shy. I agree 100%. Audra, I have a similar scene where my main character is describing a dream to a non-point of view character. She's always with the MC. I have to figure out how to retell it. I have four points of view. See, yeah, that, you know, having to retell a dream is can be really hard. Um, and this scene, it's just driving me bonkers. It's just like, how do I make this interesting and, and, and relevant to what's going on? And how do I make what's going on, move the plot, not just be a retelling and how, you know, so that's where I was at. I was at the point where I was trying to figure out how to, I knew I needed the scene, but I couldn't figure out how to drive the plot with this scene. And I think I finally figured out a way to drive the plot with this scene and actually advance the plot to my climax. Um. Joanne writes web fiction, so 2,000 is a sweet spot for chapters. Okay, that's why you needed 200 more words. Additionally, I need a few more words to wrap up the scene. I'm at a good chapter break moment, but I have not included a crucial point. So, dot, dot, dot. I know where you're at. All right, now back to kind of where I was at. Here we go. Sky says, I agree, although I've always called that being an omnivore. Don't know which is the actual term to use. I've heard both used to describe the same thing. Hi, Spot. What you doing? You gonna try and get in trouble? Scott, Spot's gonna get in trouble. He's gonna come over and onto my desk. No, you know better. You know better, you're not allowed on my desk. There's computers up here. There's computers up here. Yeah. How would you go back over there? Mm. For those who don't know, this is Spot. He's named after Data's, Data's cat from Star Trek The Next Generation. This is one of the new kittens. This is my, my little boy cat that we just got. All right, come on. Back over there. He'll be back over here in like a second. Um, so that sounds like my brother goes crazy when there's silence or if he isn't doing anything. He doesn't quite understand that some people aren't always similar and always open. Yeah, my partner, he gets it. So, what do you think? New word. I haven't heard amnivert before. I have Googled it and it seems a good fit for me too. I like that. My brother assumes when I need to be alone that I don't like being with my family. I don't know. He assumes a lot. We're trying to help him see that everyone is different and that he doesn't always need to be nosy in everything we do. Aw, how cute. Yeah, my kitties are cute. My kitties are, are very cute. Hopefully they have a chance to play with a ball here in a second, so. So this guy says, hi, Spot. Mary says, hi, to Spot. He is a cutie. He's also being incredibly loud at the moment. Audra, I have filler for that scene right now. Just a sentence saying, Esther told Lily about the dream. I had that for a while for this scene. Um, I put in there filler um, saying, uh, you know, secondary character and main character talk about the situation, um, what has happened recently in the past, and then next secondary character, something bad happens to them. And that's all, pretty much all I had in there for a little while. Um, that was literally my scene card for, um, for this scene, was that this needs to happen, and this needs to happen, and this needs to happen. But again, I've given myself a lot of leeway recently to, um, to skip over some scenes that were giving me trouble. And while that can be a good thing, um, it's also a bad thing because um, I was giving myself, I was being too lenient with myself and too relaxed with myself. So give me one second, guys. I just need to get up long enough to let the roommate's dog out because she's pawing. Good girl.
Okay. So, where was I? Um, so yeah, I've given myself a lot of um, leniency lately to kind of be lazy and just skip over scenes that um, I probably shouldn't have, I probably should have tried at least a little bit on. And instead I just let myself get to the, like the fun stuff. I was just letting myself do the fun stuff. It's kind of like your, your freshman year of college where you're like, I don't want to do all my basic classes now. I want to do um, all the fun stuff and all the elective stuff that is like the best part of my degree. And I'll do the rest of that stuff later. And normally it's not a problem for me to do it, but um, it's something I've been doing too much of lately. So I didn't want to do that. So Glory says from a binary introvert, extrovert, ambivert makes sense as an ambidextrous, but I consider human psychology to be more along spectrum. So omnivert makes sense too. Allie Cat says, I agree. I don't mind people I care about too. I just don't need to be with them all of the time. Though if people I barely know act like I'm their friends already, I get scared and want to leave immediately, if that makes sense. I'm not saying I don't mind making friends. I just can't jump in all at once. Don't know if this makes sense. It makes sense. It makes sense what you're saying. Um, I I tend to come off as very friendly, and, and I guess I am very friendly. I don't want to be people's friends, like just be people's friends. Um, but I, but I do try to set people at ease and I try to come off as more friendly whenever I'm interacting with them. <laughs> Glory. I'm here for the fur baby cameos. Yeah. They're making quite a few cameos this morning. So they are definitely, I guess it's not even morning anymore. It's now afternoon my time. Jeez. I'm not quite sure where time went. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. I have gotten some writing done, so that's what I am happy about. So speaking of writing, let's try doing another sprint. And we will go ahead and reset the timer at 15 minutes. And so we will get another sprint in before the end of the stream. I may go over two hours today since I'm doing a pop-up. Um, I did three hours earlier today. I've got time to kill and lots of words to write. So I may end up being here a lot longer than I planned on being. I never know. I may do a part three later. Who knows? I can be wild like that. I can be weird. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start the sprint in three, two, one. Sprint.
that is the end of our sprint. And let me know in the comments how you did. I am super excited. I have finally finished this crappy ass scene that has been plaguing me for like, this has been plaguing me for over a day now and just been really bugging me. It, you know, it was bugging me before that because I was trying to plot out the scene in my head and get it going in the direction I needed it to go in, but I couldn't make the words come. And then when I actually, I thought, oh, I'll just freaking stop trying to plot out the scene and I'll just write it and let myself discovery write it while I do it, which is kind of dangerous. But I thought um, I could, you know, give myself a bit of a break. Somebody's mewing. Somebody wants some affection and some attention. But I thought I could give myself a bit of a break and um, like actually just discovery write it. And it was just being very particularly difficult on the discovery writing part of things. So I don't know what kind of attention she wants. She just wants some kind of attention. So she just wants on my desk is what she wants. But she can't have that. Anyway, um, hey Devin, good to see you here. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, I know there are a ton of streams today. Um, thank you for trying to keep up with all of them. That's really awesome. And you're always really supportive like that. You always know who's streaming and who has the next stream available. And I rely on your knowledge in that a lot of times. Um, today, I am weird. I had two pop-up streams, like Sage was saying. She didn't know that I was streaming again. Um, it's a shame that your notifications aren't working. That does suck. But I find it happens a lot with YouTube. Like 99% of the time, not 99% of the time, obviously. I'm exaggerating. But a lot of times, my notifications just aren't working. Like, or they pop up, but they pop up like towards the end of a stream. And I'm like, well, that's kind of, I mean, yeah, I know I can catch it on the replay and that's a good thing, but I probably had plenty of time to be on that stream before that. And the notifications just didn't come through in time, which, you know, that happens. So yeah, Sage, I decided to go ahead and stream again after I like crashed for about two hours and got a little bit of a cat nap and then you know, pun intended a little bit, the cats then woke me out of my cat nap um, by deciding I was their personal human trampoline and that they were going to play all over the top of me because my partner got up and got ready for work um, for his extra shift today that he picked up. So, yay, Dick finished his recordings. Now you can go to sleep. You're very welcome for the stream. I wish you good night as well and ultra productivity if sleep is not an option. So sleep is not an option for me at the moment because it is now one o'clock in the afternoon, my time, and I could probably sleep, but it means then I won't sleep tonight and it means I'll be <laughs> pop up streaming at two o'clock in the morning again and y'all will be like, what the hell is she doing? <laughs> so um, let's see. Yay, Joanne also finished finish this, this shitty scene. Yay to us. Yay to shitty scenes being done. It's a great thing. Oh, God. The scene was just really, and it's such an important scene. I need it. It's a catalyst scene for, for the climax and for everything that goes on in the climax of the book. And I was like, I hate when that is the shitty scene. If it was just the shitty scene because I wanted to get to the really fun part of the climax, then yeah, awesome. But if it's shitty because it's just being shitty in general, then that's when I have a problem with my writing. And that's when I have a problem with when I just want to be like, just be like, pow, 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 knock things out and be like, you're going to do what I want you to do. So, yes, very much, Kitty. That is Domino. Um, she is the sister in the sibling pair that we just adopted um, from our friends who found them abandoned in the park by their house. Um, they found them. They were only about four or five weeks old, so they were pretty tiny. Um, they were fortunately eating kibble already at that point. So they didn't have to like wean them or do anything like that. But um, they were having a really hard time finding a home for them. And, you know, I started going over there and I fell in love with Spot. Um, I just absolutely had to have him. And then of course my partner fell in love with Domino. 
and we just absolutely had to have her. So we decided we were going to adopt two kitties at once, which has actually been a good thing because otherwise I think just one of them would have been a bit traumatized and they would have acclimated quite so quickly to our house. You can see Domino back there like playing with her tail. This is, this is what I get like all day during the non 22 hours that they're asleep. I get playtime. There comes Spot. He can't let his sister like play all by herself. So Mary got the pizza out of the oven and wrote a few more words. Ah, to the kitty. Audra got 200 words done. Congratulations. And Audra's brother has a black kitty like that. That is my tortoise shell. She's my tortoise shell kitty. It's a type of calico um, cat. I really don't know much about them. I just know that they're adorable. So. Yeah, it's, I knew I was going to get very little sleep, Sage, honestly, because I was up most of the night and I was having a hard time going to sleep. Usually when I have those nights where I'm up like that, then I, like, I usually only get a couple of hours of sleep, uh, even if I didn't have cats deciding to use me as a trampoline in the morning for their playtime. Hey, Lauren, good to see you. It's going pretty okay. I'm a little sleep deprived and obviously doing a second um, stream for the day, but I managed to get that really, really shitty scene done that I was struggling with all night. So I am pretty happy about that. And now I just have to reread it so that I can flow into my new chapter so that I can get into the actual climax of my book. And I'm so excited to be getting into the climax of my book. Yes. Yes. Kitty wrestling happens all the time. If they are awake, they are kitty wrestling. Um, they eat very briefly and then they kitty wrestle some more and then they eat very briefly and then they fall asleep. And that's, that's pretty much the extent of, I'm, but I'm glad. I'm glad that they play with each other because my older cat is not so much in the play mood with the kittens. He's more in the I barely tolerate them phase of acclimating to the new kittens. I'm hoping as they get a little bit bigger, he'll, he'll play with them a little bit more when they're a little, I don't know, a little less rowdy, but still playful. I don't know. He didn't get socialized as a kitten very much. Oh, hey, Spot. Now you're going to come over and try to do bad things. Try and get onto my desk. Yes. Yes, what you're going to try and do? Is that what you're going to try and do? I wish you guys could hear. I mean, even I can hear how loud this cat purrs. And that's pretty bad because I can't hear, like, I can't hear anything. But even I can hear how loud this, this cat purrs. It's like, I call him my little perminator. He's like, he just purrs constantly and he purrs. If I, if I just reach out for him, he suddenly starts purring. Like he's automatically purry. He, he's a cutie. Mm -hmm. Now go play with your sister. Okay. Um, Destiny says, I'm kind of lost in getting blog stuff done. I need more sleep, but it's after 2 p.m. I got about two hours of sleep. Yeah, Destiny, that's about how much sleep I got this morning um, between the first pop-up stream that I did and then getting and then my partner waking up and me spending just a little bit of time with him before he went to work and, you know, taking care of the animals and everything and then getting on this one. So I, f I, f I feel you, dog. I feel you. Lauren says, ooh, that was me yesterday. I call it, I call it something writing just to get it. Oh, vomit writing. I call it vomit writing. I definitely call it vomit writing. And rereading over what little bit I had reread over by the end of the timer, it's the crappiest writing I have done in a long time. It is terrible writing. But I don't care because I I'm pretty sure my cat just pulled my motorcycle helmet down off of the, yeah. Knock it off, you two. I am not sure how an eight ounce kitten or two eight ounce kittens managed to just shove my motorcycle helmet off of the table, but somehow did manage to do that. I'm glad it's a, uh, 
I'm, I'm glad it's, you know, crash tested. <laughs> So Alley Cat didn't write anything, but reading through my novel to find anything I need to edit and fix. Also, let your dog outside. Yeah, I mean clearly I let the the roommate's dog outside too. Sounds productive. That is true. It does. Alley Cat did finish editing a chapter though. That's very important. Editing is really an important part. Yeah, the Perminator. He's my little Perminator. He's so loud. It's so nice for me to be able to finally hear a cat purr. I haven't heard a cat purr in, I don't know, 10 years or more. So that's like a crazy thing for me is that he actually manages to purr that loud. I wish the microphone could pick it up. Um, if I were wearing my headphones, maybe it would pick it up on the little mouthpiece, but I'm not wearing my headphones. Yep, they totally knocked it off. I'm sure it's going to end up getting knocked off a few more times. Normally, it normally they have a shelf that they sit on, but our shelf right now is out in our shop because everything is packed and we're trying to get things moved. Um, our shop is like our, our spare room, basically, but um, we're trying to get everything moved out so I can clean stuff, or at least as much of it as possible moved into one room so that I can clean the rest of the house. Uh, Audra had that Wednesday night. The fire alarm of the school went off before 4 a.m. Yeah, not going to have you too, but yeah, they already did. I know. They already did. It seems pointless. It seems pointless to even reprimand them. They're kittens. They're just going to play. They're just going to play. No matter what I do. They get bopped on the nose for when they do things that they're not supposed to do, but they still do it anyway. So they just got to learn. I have no idea what she's playing with. I think she's literally playing with like her own shadow, I think on the table. And now she's over playing with the helmets again. God, man. Anyway. All right. So since we, I, I'm officially over the two hour mark, but I think I'm going to stream for just a little bit longer because I want to get one more sprint in. Even though I finished this scene, I want to get the very beginning of the scene or the very beginning of the next chapter um, set up and ready to go. So <laughs> she is, they are both very interesting cats. Our, my, my bigger cat, my older cat is also a really interesting cat. He has lots of quirks, but he acts more like a dog than a cat. Um, probably because that's what he's been raised with is dogs instead of cats. But uh, he has a lot of weird quirks and really interesting quirks for him too. But he, he steers clear of me when I'm on the computer because that's what I raised him to do. I raised him that when I'm on the computer, he just kind of leaves and goes elsewhere in the house and like curls up and sleeps for a while. <laughs> Key says, greetings. I missed this stream because I was replaying your earlier stream. Yeah, Key, I'm having one of those days, love. Um, I was not able to sleep and I have still continued to not be able to do more than catnap but I wanted to finish the damn scene that I was struggling with. And the good news is, is that I have finished the stream or the, the scene that I was struggling with. So um, I'm gonna do another sprint here in just a minute, even though I am over the two hour mark. So for those of you who are hanging with me, you are awesome. I love it. I'm glad I can be here and that you're um, enjoying the productivity time and getting stuff done because I know I am getting stuff done finally, which I am so happy with. And that takes a huge amount of pressure off of me now, um, knowing that that scene is in the bag and that I didn't cheat it. I think that that is going to be just a huge amount of weight off my shoulders because I have a lot of scenes, like I said lately, that I have kind of cheated and I've just skipped over because they were giving me trouble or they were giving me problems and I let myself get a little too lenient. But this particular scene, um, I think because it leads right into the climax of my story is why I didn't want to just skip it and say, blah, 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 X, blah, 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 X, blah, 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 and then move on. Um, I wanted the emotional buildup of being able to write this next scene, which has to be really 
explosive. So he says, I had a cat that got jealous of the computer once. He sacrificed small birds to it in hopes that they would let me pay attention to him. It succeeded, sort of. So I take it you paid attention to the fact that he was bringing you gifts. Um, but I'm, you know, probably pretty sure you continued to be on the computer. So I guess it didn't entirely work. But my, um, my older cat, he's not jealous of the computer. He just knows that when I'm on it, he just goes away for a little bit. And I think he just takes that as time, his time to sleep some more. So the kittens are still learning. Um, they are still learning to stay away from the computer, stay away from the desk when I'm at it, um, stay away from the computer in general. Um, I come in a lot and I find spots sleeping in my office chair, which we're gonna have to remedy that pretty quickly, but I get that it has a comfortable pillow and it has a comfortable little jelly support thing on it, support cushion on it, so. I kind of get why he's drawn to it, but we're gonna have to stop that because I can't be having that. But I'm gonna have to figure out what actually deters them because right now as like 12 week old kittens, nothing deters them at this point. Wow, that is pretty cool. So Key would come home and find carefully plucked and eviscerated bird in front of the computer. He even removed the gallbladder. He was really prepping that thing. He was really prepping that uh, that that birdie sacrifice there to the to the silicone gods. Um, let me see here. Yeah, um, oof to key. My dog sister used to kill birds before she passed from cancer. She could jump higher than her brother and ended up killing the birds, so I assume she thought they were toys. My cat thinks they're toys. Um, he doesn't end up killing them. Usually he just bats them out of the air, if he can catch them in the first place. He just bats them out of the air and then messes with them on the ground while they're stunned. But he doesn't actually end up hurting them. I mean, I guess they have a few feathers that are ruffled or whatever. But as soon as they're not stunned, they fly away. He says when the cat brought me gifts, he would leave them in the kitchen for me. So he either was worshiping you or he thought you were a bad cat who didn't know how to hunt for yourself. Um, Alley Cat says, or something like that, thought that they were toys. I don't know. We did our best to stop her when, when she could. Yeah. Um, I try to stop my cat from from hunting and catching the birds because I don't actually want him to hunt and, and hurt birds, but I can't always catch him. And I'm not always outside when he's outside. So other than that though, my dogs, they don't do anything. They occasionally catch the little geckos that are in our backyard that like run along our fences. Um, and like, so I'll find little gecko tails in places from where they've like pounced on them and they're, they've detached the tail and then the little gecko has gotten away find those sometimes, but not very often. Um, I do, my roommate's dog is a mouser though. He will bring us mice or she will bring us mice, um, which I'm actually okay with because we get a lot of little little field mice um, in the house, little infestations because we don't live that far from the mountain. So at least this current place that we're at right now, the new house is quite a ways away from the mountain. So we don't have, hopefully we won't have that kind of a problem. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and do another sprint because I kind of feel like doing a sprint. Hey, Danny, it is good to see you again. Um, Danny was uh, on during my first sprint of the day, which was the wee hours of my morning and popped in for a little bit. So he was saying that he was a damn smart cat. He tried to teach me how to hunt by bringing me live snakes. He got the most disgusted expression when I took them outside and let him go. <laughs> so my German Shepherd, um, I have a funny story about that. Um, my German Shepherd, we went camping as like our farewell to the Midwest right before we moved down here to Arizona. And our German Shepherd was considerably younger at that point. She was only about three years old. And she found this nest of chipmunks 
that she just kept bringing us the chipmunks and she was so disgusted with us because we kept releasing them. So eventually she started killing them and then bringing them to us. And then she acted so offended when we buried them that it was hilarious to watch her face because she just couldn't understand like she kept trying to paw them, like trying to stop us from burying them because I, she was bringing us food. So. Um, Allie Cat says, we succeeded sometimes, but not all the time. They love things that move. Her brother usually just barks or gets confused when he sees something in the sky or something. It's kind of funny. Yeah, I can see how that is. Hey, Sako, good to see you, my weirdo writing sister. Devin is, my mom had a cat that would bring dead bunnies into the house and present them to her like trophies. Ugh, bunnies. Ugh, I don't like bunnies. I got a thing against bunnies. Oh, just skipped. So it looks like Danny is just hanging out with the son before, with his son before he gets ready for work today. <laughs> Key. The cat's name was Little Shit. He named himself. He even came when you called every time. So my cat comes to his name. My older cat comes to his name, which is Gozer. He also comes to Cat, and he also comes to Pendejo. Those are the three terms that he comes to all the time. And it's, it never fails. I can use any one of them, and he comes to him. He, well, he may not come to Cat. Usually he runs away when I yell Cat. But um, our roommate tends to say sub cat like all the time and he he'll come to him when he says it. So Ali Unicorn fan, so I took an unplanned nap. I know I missed about an hour or at least 30 minutes. Don't worry, I am still streaming at this point because I want to now that I finished that horrendous scene, I want to like roll the emotional high that I have from that scene right into the beginning of the next chapter, which is my climax chapter. So no worries about that. Lauren is off to make some dinner, got some editing done. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Lauren, for being here. I appreciate it. Audra, one of my dogs, I'm allergic to kitties, has killed birds. They chased the rats in the backyard. Rats invaded when they took down the horse racetrack. I, yeah, I can imagine that they, you probably had a real infestation at that point. He brought you a pheasant? Oh, well, I mean, here in Arizona, pheasant is actually pretty common to find. Pheasant and quail. You can pretty much find them just about anywhere. But I guess if you're not here in Arizona, then, yeah, it might be a little weird to find some pheasant. That's funny. Our dogs didn't do that. I think our boy dog killed a few, but usually couldn't. When we picked up dead birds, our dog would just wonder what we were doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, now our dog looks at us like, I'm not going to chase that. But she's older now. Our German Shepherd is older now. So, all right, let's get back to this whole writing thing um, and see if we can't get a little bit more writing done. See if I can't roll some of this energy from finishing this horrendous scene and getting it done. Um, so we will roll in to another sprint. And as soon as I reset the timer and get that ready to go. Sage, you are just in time for another sprint. So we'll get this going in three, two, one, sprint.
that is our sprint. And I'll finish with that 15 minutes. Let me know how you all did in the chat. I actually was able to roll some of that momentum and that emotional energy that I had from finishing the crappy scene right on into the beginning of the other chapter of the climax chapter. So I'm super happy. So I was able to get So I was able to get 536 words, which is by far my highest word content of the night in a single sprint. So I'm pretty happy with that. Of course, I also like, like sabotaged myself for a moment and got distracted by Facebook for just a second. So that was kind of sucky, but Sage is hoping that this is the one that they finally finished their script on. I'm hoping so too. You'll have to let me know how you're doing on that script and how it's going. So Sage, when you're talking about your script, do you fully script out or do are you talking about your outlines and like, um, like knowing what B-roll you're gonna use and scripting out that way? So are you like storyboarding it or fully script scripting? Um, I'm just kind of curious because I've had heard a lot of different um, I've heard a lot of, like, a lot of YouTubers, they will use a full script, especially if they're doing something that's really detailed, and then other ones, other YouTubers that are like, no, nah, man, you can't do that, you just gotta do your video, like, in the moment and all, so I'm just kind of curious as to, to what people do. I use an outline, and, um, especially if I have something that's really detail-heavy or, um, content that's really dense, because otherwise I start to ramble and um, I can take too much time thinking and then it takes me forever to edit it out later. But um, that is basically just an outline that I use and have up near my camera on a piece of paper so that I can just glance at my outline every so often and um, make sure that I'm following along with where I'm supposed to be at. So Destiny is saying that she has stick a fork in her, kind of officially done, getting only two hours. My brain is like, nope, I am done. Even filling in a template seems like too much work. Maybe I need some food and Pepsi and I could get back to it. And a little bit of caffeine and a little bit of food might help, but you could also just be at the point where, yeah, you're a little tired at this point. So I know um, I if I didn't have quite so many um, so much caffeine running through my system right now. I feel like I've just been like jacked into a, a stream of caffeine and IV of caffeine. I'd probably be very easily like be able to lay down and just be like, you know, and completely out of it, but not at the moment. So Ali Unicorn fan was saying that I was watching from bed, which might not have been the best idea, but it's a day off. So, you know, yeah, what are you going to do? Seems I needed the rest anyway. It's a good thing. If you need the rest and you're able to fall asleep, then it's absolutely amazing. I just, like last night, I needed the rest, but I couldn't fall asleep. And even once I fell asleep, then apparently I didn't need the rest all that much. So, um, Key was reading through to make sure that they weren't missing anything. Alley Cat, 39 words added as I got distracted. Um, yeah, I got distracted by social media, so I know how you're feeling. Sako is working on my Buho for the beginning of June. That is cool. And Joanne says, thanks for the stream. You are very welcome, Joanne. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And have fun hitting the stores before they close. Yay, Sage, you were able to get it done. The script is done. And yes, it's the same one I started in my earlier stream. Don't worry, it was the same scene I started in my earlier stream. So between these two um, streams for today, we were both able to knock out our particular project for the day, which was you working on your script and me getting that terrible scene down. So Audra got 245. It's a total of 583 words in this stream. That is really awesome. Um, Mary ran out of steam on her scene. It was an experiment anyway, so I don't know if I'll even keep it. It's a rewrite of a major scene in the rising action of Shadows of the Past, experimenting with point of view switch. Yeah, I know you've been working really hard on, on that and trying to see what you're going to do um, going forward with it. So I'm excited to see what you're going to do. 
So Sage says, I fully script out my videos. I'm not confident enough to wing it or just outline. I don't know that I'm confident enough. I'm maybe egotistical enough to just wing it and outline. Um, <laughs> um, no, I, I tried fully scripting and I just, I looked robotic. I looked like I was reading um, the entire time. And, you know, there are some outlines that are heavier than others. And I have just a lot more information that I've got to remember to talk about. So, like, they look like they're more scripted out fully, but they're not actually more scripted out fully. They're just thoughts that while I was outlining were really good. And so I'll jot them down. Um, so I try to remember where I was at and how to get those thoughts back um, or at least just be able to use them. Um, also the Jim Jam conversations, what I'm working on now is my in-depth series, lots of research and work on scripts. So I give myself a break and film in my Jim Jams. That's PJs, yes. Um, I get gym jams, I call them gym jams all the time. So that is one of my words that I use on a fairly regular basis. So Mary was saying that Jamie suggested we drop our point of view count down to our two MCs. I'm supposed to be taking a break from editing right now, but this version of the scene popped in my head, so I decided to run with it. But I started thinking about other scenes that will have to change, and I'm not sure if this is the right time to be thinking about all of this. I really should just take the break. You've been talking about just taking a break on it, but it can be hard. It, it can be really hard to like break ourselves from a project that we've been very immersed in for a while. When I, so this particular draft of, I joke around and I call this particular draft of my third book draft number 666 because I have redrafted and rewritten and replotted and re brainstormed and re outlined this book probably like five times now. Um, it would get started and it would diverge quite a bit or it would, it were, I just wouldn't quite outline and plot the way that I was wanting it to go. So I would mess with it and I would tweak it and I'd move it around and I'd mess with it some more and tweak it and move it around some more. And I finally, even though it was really driving me nuts and I knew I needed to step away from it, I kept kept playing with it and kept messing with it until I finally did just completely step away from it. I, I finally told myself that I absolutely was not going to work on it. And how I did that was I actually just took a total break from writing in general. This was like last year. Um, and I took a, a, like almost the entire year off to where I didn't touch any kind of writing that wasn't like work related or wasn't um, specific to a client or something like that. If it was creative writing and it was my own writing, then it was something that I just didn't do at the time. Um, so I knew that I had to step away from it and I knew I had to do something else in order to be able to come back at it fresh. So maybe, maybe it is a good idea um, to, to step away from the project and to, um, give it a little more time to kind of marinate in your brain, if that makes sense. But you'll do what is, you know, what is best for you in the long run. Sage says, I'm hoping that I'll eventually become more comfortable and be able to work off just an outline. I've tried it, but I stumble over my words and get confused. I know how you're feeling. Um, the first, I want to say the first month's worth of videos, month and a half worth of videos. And remember, I've not been doing that this long either. It's been three months of me doing it. Um, and I say for that first month, especially that first month, I really had a hard time. I'd get really, I'd confuse myself on what I was talking about or the examples I was giving. I'd stumble over my words a lot. What helped me was um, when I record, I usually don't record my videos alone. I have a friend that comes over and spends time with me and we can just kind of chat. I just, instead of looking at her while I'm talking, which is really awkward for me um, to not look at somebody while they're talking, I look at the camera and talk. Um, sometimes I have her sit behind the camera, so I am kind of looking at her while I'm talking and um, she asks questions and has me clarify things if it if I do seem to get confused. It's been really, really beneficial for me to be able to do that. I know not everybody has that opportunity, but what helped me even more was doing the live streams. Um, once I started doing these live streams and I started having 
um, even when I was just on camera by myself, but when I started having co-hosts and I was going back and forth more with the conversation, I got far more comfortable on camera. And when I started doing the live streams by myself, and doing these pop-ups where I was going to be all by myself and I had to carry the whole conversation and I had to make sense and I couldn't just be totally confused um, all the time at least because I know sometimes I still am. But that really started helping me get more comfortable in doing my regular videos. But again, I still have my friend come over. Um, she doesn't come over all the time now. Like she used to come over for every single video I did and she'd come over and um, – let me talk at her basically what my premise of my video was. Um, but that was also before I started outlining my videos. And now that I'm outlining my videos and I'm doing that, um, I, I don't necessarily need her to be here. I like for her to be here because sometimes it's fun just to, just to know what her input is. Um, so if maybe, I don't know, maybe if you had a friend that would be able to help you out in that regard, that's an idea. Um, other than that, I you know, would just say the more comfortable you get with your live streams and doing your live streams, um, which I know you do on Tuesdays, then I think the more you'll feel comfortable in your own skin in front of the camera and doing stuff like that. Um, I take some medicine that, you know, kind of slows down my thought process just a little bit on top of my ADD medicine, which slows down my brain quite a bit. It slows it down to normal, but from normal to me, it feels very sluggish. So it's easy for me to get confused um, when I am talking through something. Plus, I also don't want to seem like I'm talking through something. I want to seem like I know what I'm talking about because I do know what I'm talking about. I'm just trying to figure out how to say it out loud versus just my innate knowing how to do it, which I don't know if that makes sense. But OK, so um, it's about uh, 10 minutes until I have been on here for three hours. And three hours for me is even kind of pushing it just a little bit. I could do longer, I could do, I could probably do a whole nother hour and be all, ex, you know, and still be up and moving around, but I probably should do something other than just writing for today. Um, and I don't know, like do some housework or do some packing or something like that. So let's try doing a quick 10 minute um, sprint just for the last sprint. I don't even know if I have a 10 minute timer. I have five minute timers. I have 15, 20 and 30 minute timers. I have 25 minute timers. But I do not even have a 10 minute timer on my list. So let me grab one. 10 minute timer. Just a little 10 minute timer. Let's get something that doesn't have like a crazy jarring sound to it at the very end of it. I mean, I won't know entirely because I haven't like watched through it. But like this one says, this timer counts down silently until it reaches zero. Then a police siren sounds to alert you that time is up. I don't think we need to do a police siren at the end of anything. It'd scare the shit out of everybody. Um. I scare the crap out of people when I do the um, when I do the dog timer that has the, the dogs on the screen because it barks at the end and everybody's always like ah scared the crap out of me because it's a quiet timer otherwise. So let's see about doing this electric timer. It's probably gonna have an ad at the very beginning. Hold on real quick. Of course, my computer would be taking forever to, like YouTube would be taking forever. And I was right, it totally had a, totally had a um, timer at the beginning of it, but I don't want that timer at the beginning of it. Okay, 
um, Sage, okay, yeah, I hope that happens. Maybe Mr. Sage will be able to help out when he's out of the hospital um, and, you know, and feeling well enough to, to be able to help you out. Again, it's, it's just nice if you have them sit behind the camera and then you can just kind of talk to them and explain it like you would just normally explain it to somebody. I don't know about you, but I have people ask me about writing all the time and how I would do certain things. That's pretty much the impetus behind me starting my YouTube channel to begin with was not that I was sick of it, but I thought it would just be easier to be able to make the videos and say, you know, I, I totally have advice for you. I made a video about it. You can watch it anytime that's really convenient to you. Um, Mary says it makes complete sense. Jamie had also suggested taking the break. So I'm going to listen to her. Good. Maybe it will. I really think it'll help. Um, if you just step away from this project for a little while and, you know, maybe try doing something else. If you can't step away from the project because you keep finding yourself going back to it, then I recommend just trying not writing for just a smidgen of amount of time. And maybe that'll be enough to kind of break the, the hold it has over you. He says, it's like asking a caterpillar how he handles all those legs. He knows how to do it, but explaining it isn't easy. Exactly, Key. That is exactly what it's like. As writers, a lot of what we do is really intuitive, um, and we just know what we're doing, and it can be really hard to describe it and explain it sometimes. It's like trying to explain, it's trying to describe breathing. It's trying to describe just things that I mean, I had my friend the other day, I was doing a video and she was over and we were, it was a video specifically about um, conflict and how to make sure that you don't have repetitive conflict in a story. And I was explaining all of these different things and she's like, you know, I like to write, but I don't think I could actually be a full blown author like you are. There are just way too many things to think about. And I was like, there are lots of things to think about, but it's kind of like driving a car. It's I just learned how to do it and now I can just pretty much do it without really thinking about it too much. Um, you know, I mean, I do have to think about it a little bit, but not that much. So yes, no, no, please sirens. Don't worry, Sage. I won't do that to you. So Sage is actually running the local writers group when we're not in lockdown and I'm really comfortable talking about it with them. So it's just getting used to the camera thing. Yeah. It's just getting used to the camera. Um, and just getting used to the fact that you feel like you aren't really saying it to anybody. Um, but you're, you kind of just have to imagine that there is a person there or you just like I did, I just physically put a person in the room and it helped me out so much, so much. All right. So let's go ahead and do this 10 minute timer. Um, which I think it has music during it, but I'm going to mute it during the whole music thing. And then I'll unmute it there towards the end. Um, just because I don't want to have to leave my thing unmuted the whole time. And you listen to me click, clack, clack and on my keys and all of that annoying stuff. So, okay, we're going to do our last sprint, which will be for 10 minutes, which will be, I am actually not going to write during it. I am going to do some stretches because I have now been sitting here for three hours after only getting a two hour cat nap of which I sat for three hours before that. So I am starting to really feel in my body. Um, so I am gonna do some, you know, like cool down stretches from my writing. All right, starting in three, two, one, and sprint.
And that is the end of the last sprint for my second part of my live stream. Who knows? There may end up being a third part. You never know with me. I can be weird like that sometimes if I decide I want to get on a roll and want to do more writing later on then make sure you click my subscription and that notification bell, although that notification bell seems to be a little janky, if you know what I'm talking about, but it is the closest that we have to knowing for certain when people are going to pop up and going to have new stuff going on, like me. Um, so we had Ed Weird World that had popped in just for a second to leave a com comment and say, hey, glad that you could pop in just for a second. Hopefully you'll be able to catch um, some other live streams coming up. There are a whole bunch of us, of course, that are live streaming and apparently a whole bunch of us that are even live streaming today. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to do that. So as you, if any of you had looked up during that sprint, as you saw, I didn't do any writing during that particular sprint. All I did was close some of my windows on my computer, including my document and made sure I saved it, of course, before I did that. Um, and I ended up just doing some cool down stretches because like I said, I now have officially been sitting at this computer for at least six hours at this point. Um, and probably actually a little bit more than that because uh, actually I know it was more than that because I was on by the Brooks stream. I was in her chat before that even. So I've been sitting here for some time and I needed to do some stretching. So here in a minute, once I'm actually done with my live stream for this time at least, um, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna do the rest of my full body stretching so that I can make sure all is good. And I'm gonna drink myself some more water because water is the nectar of life and it's a good thing. So make sure to do your stretching and make sure to drink your water if you are gonna continue to do some streaming today and do some more sprints. Um, for everybody that is holding them for today. I am glad that people have been able to um, have some fun and come back into the stream for the day. I, like I said, did my stretching, but I kind of want to know before we leave um, what everybody else did um, during that last little 10 minute uh, cool down right time. Mary did another short journal entry, then Jamie text. And for those of you who don't know, Jamie is like her best friend and they've been working on a, um, a project together um, that Mary is gonna step away from for just a little bit called Shadows of the Past, which we're all super excited about this when she does get back to it. Um, and that is no rush, Mary, whatsoever. Um, but we are super excited to kind of see more about this particular project going on later. So, um, <laughs> Sage says, if there is a third part, I will most likely not be there because it's coming up on midnight for me now. I do not blame you, Sage. You were here for the last, um, for the other ones. So um, I'm glad that you have fun, Alley Cat. Um, I always enjoy having you in the chat. It's always a lot of fun. And thank you, Sage. Gently caress that like button, folks. Just give it a little, a little gentle, gentle tap. Just a little gentle tap tap. Just a tippity tap. Just a tippity tap tap, just gentle caress, just gentle caress. So Audra got 174 words this time. That is 757 total for the stream today. That is 757 words you did not have before, Audra. I am so proud of you. So Sage didn't write either. I was playing Picross Luna. Um, you are very welcome, Key, for the stream. I'm glad that you're close to finishing this damn that damn thing and that these streams are helping you get through these last few days. Oh, good to know that QWERTY is streaming right now. I may, um, after I do some stretching, I may have to go over and pop into her chat for just a few minutes. I highly recommend that you check out QWERTY's channel. I believe she is in my, um, in my links below. If she is not, then just type in QWERTY, and it's QWERTY. And then she is really awesome, and um, I think you'll really enjoy her channel and her sprints. So um, also down in my comment, oh, comment box, also down in my box below, you can find all of my information, my social medias, you can find me on all of those at BC Brown Books. Um, I do have a Patreon site, of course, please subscribe. If you'd like to become a Patreon member, you do get exclusive, exclusive stuff. And I'm not one of those weird people that has like, like $15 or $50 tiers of Patreon. It's just $1 a month and it helps support me here on the channel. I also have a merchandise, um, 
uh, store where you can go and get things. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of my shirts right now where it says Weirdos Welcome. Um, that is one of my merchandise that I happen to have. So you can check out all of that. And um, yeah, go and follow some of the other author tubers that are on there that do some streaming. This is an absolutely amazing community. Devin actually says that this is Cordy's channel or Cordy's particular stream. So we can go to that immediately from following this one. I want to thank you all my writing weirdos for coming out and spending this time with me. It really means a lot to me. And I hope you all have a good day. And I want you all to keep getting weird about your words. I will see you later.